Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. Let's uh, take a look at futures on this Friday. Look at the Dow looking like it would open up right now about 70 points higher. The Nasdaq looking to open higher, about 46 points higher. And the S&P 500 looking to open about eight points higher after uh, what was, uh, you know, I think there were concerns we could have a, a down day. But we'll see where, uh, where we end the day, Joe. Yep. Uh, like yesterday, we had uh, no idea. Um, way, way yep. of starting out and where to end. Uh, let's get to Eamon. Tensions between China and the United States are on the rise. Stop the presses, Eamon, as the two countries cancel visas, close each other's consulates, accuse each other of mishandling the COVID-19 virus. Now the U.S. government has identified a new threat from the Chinese. This is crazy, Eamon, and it's coming from a place uh, you'd likely least expect Fertility clinics. I read this, Eamon, I was, I, I mean, it was like, God, I could make up some conspiracy theories about this if I wanted to and why you would focus on this. Uh, anyway, Eamon Jevers joins us with a new investigation centering on some of the most intimate decisions a family can make. Uh, do explain, Eamon. Yeah, Joe, that's right. CNBC has learned that the U.S. government has used a secretive process to block a Chinese company from acquiring an American fertility clinic. But why would they do that? To find out, we went to the Department of Justice for answers. John Demers heads the National Security Division of the Department of Justice, making him one of the country's top spy hunters. Your genetic material, your biological material is among the most intimate information about you, who you are, what your vulnerabilities may be, what your illnesses have been in the past, what your family medical history is, etc. And again, that can be used from a counterintelligence perspective to either coerce you or convince you to help uh, the Chinese. Our investigation has found four of the roughly dozen fertility clinics in the San Diego area have investors with links to China. Fertility treatments are hugely popular in China after the repeal of the one child policy there. And Chinese customers have flocked to American clinics, which are seen as among the best in the world. Take the case of HRC Fertility in California. One of its offices is in Oceanside, just a 14-minute drive from the front gate of Camp Pendleton. There's no way to tell from its offices or website, but the fertility clinic's ownership history is global and extremely convoluted. In 2017, management rights to HRC Fertility were purchased by an investment entity in the British Virgin Islands that was in turn owned by a Chinese coal company. Later, a new entity took the company public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So why would a Chinese coal company want to buy a U.S. fertility clinic in the first place? HRC tells us the coal mining subsidiary was merely a convenient investment vehicle. And the company says it's engaged in significant restructuring to allay China-related concerns, including keeping all U.S. patient data on servers inside the United States. And as for the clinic being located near a U.S. military base, the company calls that a meaningless coincidence. But it's the kind of transaction that can be concerning to the U.S. government. So what if you saw a subsidiary of a Chinese mining company buying an American fertility chain? Would that be a red flag to you? Well, without obviously commenting on any individual transaction, that's the kind of dissonance that would be very interested to us. In a statement, HRC told us in part, the company complies with all relevant federal and state laws and regulations regarding patient data security. We take patient information and data security seriously and do not share any patient information with our parent company. In fact, we go beyond the requirements and use third-party experts to confirm the security of our patient data on a regular basis. It's a big global economy. Why should we say there's anything wrong with the Chinese buying American companies? Well, what we're worried about is the use that they make of the data. If all they were doing was then running that company as a going concern and earning the profits from it, that would be fine. What could they do with it? Demers says there are some terrifying possibilities. The worst case would be, and I'm not saying that we've seen this, but the worst case would be the development of some kind of biological weapon. Really? If you had all of the data of a population, you might be able to see what that population is most vulnerable to. 
Mira Ricardel, the former deputy national security advisor, told CNBC CFIUS, the highly secretive Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, located in the Treasury Department, has already taken action. Has the federal government ever blocked the acquisition of a fertility clinic in the United States by the Chinese? I, I believe they have. Again, these are not things that are reported. It's a confidential process, but I understand there's been at least one case. And guys, CFIUS does have the authority under U.S. law to actually force American companies to be divested of their ownership if they think that there's a national security problem there. There's no indication, though, that that's happening right now with any of these Chinese-linked fertility clinics inside the United States. Back over to you. Okay. Um, behind, it, after all what, what you just said, Neymar, what do you think that the U.S. government is really worried about here? Look, Joe, I think they've got two concerns when you talk to intelligence and law enforcement officials. One is sort of the individual level, right? If you have biologically identifiable data inside a fertility clinic, uh, you could use that to, as leverage to get somebody to cooperate with the Chinese intelligence, either as blackmail or exploiting some kind of weakness. So on the individual level, they're worried about recruiting American spies, potentially U.S. military members who go on to careers in the CIA or who go, go on to be posted overseas. So that's one. Uh, the other one is, is sort of a more uh, business-related concern, which is that they're concerned that the, this is a, of a part of a broader Chinese effort to acquire U.S. biological data in huge numbers, massive data sets, and they can use those data sets to leapfrog American pharmaceutical companies and sort of do to the U.S. pharmaceutical industry uh, what the Chinese have been able to do with Huawei and others uh, to the U.S. telecommunications industry. That's a big concern in terms of national security and American competitiveness. So. They're worried about both things, but some of this stuff does sound a little sci-fi, Joe. Yeah, it does. I haven't done it yet. Have you? I haven't done any 23, any of that <laughs> stuff. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm star matter. I'm a child of the universe. I'm not sure I want to know, Eamon, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a pretty good good sense of where I came from, and I, I don't think I need to use that. But they, you know, some of the the data that's being acquired by those those DNA companies, you know, that goes into a database. And once you give up your DNA information, you can't get it back. It's not like a credit card number that you could change in the future if that's hacked and and uh, put into a database somewhere around the world. Your DNA is your DNA, and it's going to be with you until uh, for the rest of your life. So, if that gets into a foreign database, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's gone forever. It's pretty, it is pretty amazing. I was, I was in fact, adopted. Now, my, my kids have done this, and it's pretty, I mean, people that wanted to keep things a secret, it's not possible, it's not possible anymore, my friend, because my kids are related to my birth family, so everybody knows now. Everybody knows what happened, and, you know, back then, uh, back in, when this was done earlier, uh, there were guarantees that this would, it would never come out. Well, it's out, baby, and, and everybody knows. It's, it's really right. weird. It's really weird, David, but very powerful, and I think There's I kind of There's just a lot fewer secrets these days, right? Yeah, but I think I understand that it, you know, it's very personal, and it, it's something you wouldn't want on a database, I don't think, uh, where everyone knew, especially attached to your name. Anyway, Beck, you have a... Uh, yeah, I mean, Eamon, I, that makes me start thinking about things like the, the data, or the genetics data places, like a 23andMe or something. Are they looking at them in the same sort right. of way? There are so many of these uh, hereditary sites out there, things where you, sit and you willingly send in your saliva, and then what happens to that data? Yeah, look, I mean, that's a real open question, and, and the U.S. government does have concerns about a broad range of Chinese efforts to partner with American universities, to acquire uh, data collection companies, uh, to get that medical research. There's even been some hacking uh, by the Chinese of American medical companies to get uh, individual American medical data. All of that uh, the U.S. government looks at and says, you know, the, the Chinese are gathering an enormous amount of medical technology and data. Why is that? What are they going to do with it? One of the concerns is this counterintelligence concern that you could have say, a young Marine at Camp Pendleton who later goes on to a career in the CIA, uh, you know, years from now, his DNA will be the same. And if he's posted in China, they can identify him that way. They can tell that he's a former Marine and maybe check that his, his story doesn't match. But, but broadly, there's this other concern about pharmaceutical companies. You know, the United States has an enormous lead in pharmaceuticals around the world. Uh, the Chinese, by acquiring or stealing uh, that data, can turn it over to uh, their companies uh, and try to leapfrog or at least catch American pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. All right, uh, Eamon. Thank you.
interesting. Good job. Yeah. Good work. And it seemed, uh, had no idea. Anyway, that, that, uh, thanks for bringing that to us. We'll see you. All right, Beck, it's raining down there. With, I think it's raining here. It was earlier. Anyway, uh, Becky. I can't see outside right now. Anyway, when we come back, a wide-ranging interview with LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman. Everything from tech's record run on Wall Street to election season volatility to whether a government social media crackdown is finally at hand. Right now, as we head to a break, check out shares of Boeing. Europe's top aviation regulator says that the company's 737 MAX jet is safe enough to return to service. The safety official said in an interview that his agency expects to issue a draft airworthiness directive next month. Check it out. Boeing shares up by better than 4.5%, all the way back up to 171.75. Stay tuned. You're watching Squawk Box on CNBC.